Well, I'd like to call the June 28th regular meeting to order. Um, Ms. Wong, will you please read the opening statement? Let the minutes reflect that adequate notice of the holding of this regular meeting of the Howell Township Council was provided for in the following manner. By the posting of a copy of said notice upon the bulletin board in the Township Municipal Building on January 1, 2011. By the faxing of a copy of said notice to the Asbury Park Press, Tritown News and Star Ledger for publication on January 1, 2011. By the filing of a copy of said form and notice in the Township Clerk's Office on January 1, 2011. The public will be allowed to attend and will be allowed to participate pursuant to the open public meetings law. The public is reminded that civility and decorum will be maintained during the meeting. Any contracts awarded at this meeting or between now and the next meeting will be required to comply with the requirements of Public Law 1975, Chapter 127. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code, be advised that this facility is designed with three emergency exits for your safety. The locations are as follows. Upon exiting the meeting room to the rear, there to immediate left and immediate right, and at the front of the meeting room at the left of the dais. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Television. Have a roll call, please, Ms. Wilmer. Mrs. Clark? Present. Mr. Nicastro? Present. Mrs. Smith? Present. Mr. Gatto? Present as well. M Mayor Walsh? Here alone. Uh, it's true. I believe we have <laughs> reason to go into executive session, Ms. Schlegel? Uh, yes, Mayor. Land acquisition, global, and personnel. Okay, Ms. Wilmer, please read the uh, executive session resolution. Whereas the governing body of the Township of Howell is authorized pursuant to NJSA 10 colon 4-12 to exclude the public from that portion of this meeting for purposes of discussing specific matters as permitted by NJSA 10 colon 4-12. Whereas the governing body of the Township of Howell intends to discuss certain matters which are deemed confidential pursuant to NJSA 10 colon 4-12. Whereas at this time the governing body of the Township of Hal cannot determine the time when the discussion to be held in executive session will be made public, but will disclose the minutes of executive session when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Now therefore be it resolved by the governing body of the Township of Hal that this meeting shall be adjourned to an executive session, and the public will be excluded in order that the governing body of the Township of Hal may discuss the items previously listed, and upon reconvening this public meeting, the presiding officer will announce, if possible, the time when and the circumstances under which the discussion conducted in executive session will be disclosed to the public. Motion to go into executive session. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have a roll call, please, Ms. Wilmer. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. For the benefit of the public, we will reconvene the meeting at 7.30. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to reconvene the meeting. Would you all please stand for the salute to the flag? Stand there for one moment in silent observation for our troops that are fighting all over this world for freedom we get to enjoy on a daily basis. Me personally, I'll be praying for them all to come home safely to their family and their loved ones. Executive session minutes from tonight's meeting can be disclosed to the public when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. When we have accept acceptance of minutes from previous meetings, I need a separate vote on May 10th. Do we need a separate vote on uh, the 17th or 24th? Was everybody here? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, let's have a separate vote across the board on May 10th. I have a question. Um, there might be a correction, but on um, page three uh, uh, of May 10th, uh, under discussion, the second paragraph, it says, um, Mr. Civitello, second line down, wouldn't have a problem. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, he wouldn't have a problem. 
it, it's it's right. I read it wrong once. Could it be it was just the opposite. Excuse me. I know I'm not perfect. Okay. One eye anyway is it? Okay, Thank so you. Then it's all right. So I'll, I'll move May 10th if there's no other uh, discussion. Go second. Second. Can I have a roll call, please. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Abstain. May 17th, do I have a motion? So I move. Do I have a second? Second. Can I have a roll call, please. Mrs. Clark? Abstain. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. May 24th, can I have a motion, please? Make a motion to accept as read. Second. Have a roll call, please. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. Reports of township officials. Ms. Nunziata, anything on our roads? Anything you want to talk to me about? Uh, yes, thank you. Very quickly. Uh, the road program phase one actually is underway. Uh, we're, we're in Ramtown this week. We're doing uh, curbing, removing trees, uh, and that is underway already. Um, that'll continue for the rest of the week. Uh, next week, after the 4th of July, probably the 5th or the 6th, we're going to begin doing the actual milling and paving. Uh, it's anticipated two to three weeks, weather permitting. Uh, as far as the actual schedule, which roads when, uh, we have a preliminary schedule that's going to be coming out tomorrow, so we're not exactly sure yet. As soon as we do know, we will put it on the uh, internet or the website, and everybody can be aware of it that way. Uh, the second project... Um, there is a second project, but for some reason it's escaping me. I didn't, didn't write notes down. Um, oh, the Echo Lake Bridge. That's the other one. That actually, the signage is up. Uh, they are going to start uh, July 5th that week. Uh, originally, the original things are going to be the utility relocations. They got to take the poles and, and move the wiring to keep the electric running for that neighborhood. Uh, we do not have an exact schedule. The contractor gave a preliminary one. However, the uh, consulting engineer inspector has asked for a specific. Uh, they have 150 days via contract, which puts it around November. Uh, so they're asking for a specific schedule. That email came across today. We hopefully we have that in the next couple of days. And again, when we have that, uh, we will put that on the website as well. So the road will be shut down for approximately 150 days. Correct. And they are going to put concrete barriers on either side of the bridge, but there will be access to the driveways of all the residents, as well as the North Bank Fishing Pier and the uh, pavilion on the, the south side, our building. So that will be accessible throughout the whole entire time. You just can't go across the bridge. Thank you, Mr. Ziana. Mr. Filiaccio? Nothing tonight, Mayor. Ms. King? Nothing tonight, Mayor. Ms. Schlegel? Um, yes, Mayor. I'd like <coughs> to report that the curbside recycling scheduled for collection on July 4th in Zone A has been rescheduled for Saturday, July 9th. Uh, we've had some questions come into my office regarding the reassessment, so I'd just like to give a little bit of information. Uh, you can go to our website at www.twp.howell.com nj.us for the information but as a result of the disparity in property values of more than 70 percent of the existing properties the township's been ordered to do a reassessment this cannot be done in-house as a compliance plan because it includes more than 50 percent of the properties a hybrid reassessment will be done in partnership with the township assessor's office and a hired revaluation firm Analysis of market sales from Hal Township will be used to value residential properties. The township is within five years of the last reassessment or revaluation, which means that no interior inspections of properties are needed in order to complete the reassessment. The reassessment will be conducted this year, and the new values are scheduled to go on in 2012. The reassessment will correct any disparity in the property values, which is expected to reduce the number of appeals, as well as correct any inequities in neighborhoods that have occurred due to the high volume of appeals over the last few years. The township's goal is to attempt to ensure that all of our properties are assessed fairly and accurately as possible. I'd also like to mention that our farmland preservation plan has been approved and I would like to especially thank the Preservation Task Force for all their work on making this happen. 
That's it. Drunk. That's it for me, Mayor. Stephen, what do you offer me, Stephen? Yes, Mayor. I have some information from the rec department tonight on the summer camp, the K through fifth group. Um, as always, the township is looking to be more efficient and cost effective. So in the past, the parents have received the, in the post mail their parents package, which includes who their counselor is, their, the calendar, and any important information for the summer camp. Uh, this year, though, we sent out through email the fourth and fifth grade group to see a trial, see how it's, it's gone over with the parents. And I, I will have to say we have gotten some good feedback. A lot of the parents do appreciate getting the information in their email. And also we've worked out a couple kinks too where a couple parents uh, made some good suggestions as well. So I just encourage any parent that has a child in the fourth and fifth grade to, to make sure they check their email. Uh, we sent out the fourth and fifth stuff. Some of it's gone into their spam junk folder. So make sure that they, they look in that as well. Uh, kindergarten through third grade will, uh, they'll sh they should be receiving their information shortly. And uh, just like to say, we have a really great turnout for the K through fifth. We have over 975 children registered. Good turnout. Ms. Walner. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Councilman DeCastro. Nothing, Mayor. Councilwoman. Uh, just two things. I would like to see if um, the Strategic Planning Committee hopes to have a report done. I wanted to see about uh, scheduling a day for presentation. I talked to the chairman. I'll bring it up tomorrow night. I know we have a July 12th. I just want to see what the schedule was, if we could. We could certainly put them on for that meeting, if okay. you would like. I'll follow up tomorrow night, and we can. Uh, just let me know, and, and, and know. we'll make sure they're put on the agenda. Um, I want to thank all of the officers in blue, uh, the chief and uh, the officers here. It's a, a wonderful, nice new tradition, and I appreciate their presence. That's it. That's it. And the mayor's making fun of me. That's great. That's how we're starting the meeting. I told you I was medicated, didn't I? Yes. Councilwoman Smith. Uh, just one thing quickly. Uh, I have um, problems with an ordinance that comes up later. Uh, not with the idea of the ordinance, but with some of the verbiage. And it brings to mind that... Um, it really, the ordinance itself wasn't really workshopped. And I would like to see us, and if we could put on for discussion at a near future date, uh, discussion on meeting process and actually ha workshopping work, <laughs> workshop things and not having the meetings all mixed together workshop. as much as possible. Uh, it would avoid such things, having to discuss ordinances when they're on for public hearing. I wonder how everybody else feels about that, if we could have a discussion on the uh, setting policy for uh, meeting procedures. I have no problem with that. If you I really don't understand. <coughs> what's being asked of me here. Um, don't we usually discuss most of the things that come on as ordinance during workshop meetings beforehand? We normally have the topic on for discussion and then the follow subsequent meeting have the uh, ordinance on for first reading and then the next meeting it would be for the <coughs> second reading but we and public hearing and adoption. Excuse me. But, but but we don't always go through the ordinance. We might all agree on the subject mm -hmm. matter and the goals of the ordinance, but the verbiage and discussions on actually what we're adopting aren't always discussed. And sometimes it's a minor thing, sometimes it's, it's very smooth, and sometimes I'd like some discussion. I either have some questions or... I think maybe something a little bit different might be a little bit better and would like to discuss it with the rest of the council. Mayor? Yes, sir. I agree with uh, Councilwoman Smith, but I think that would just be a function of this governing body of how we handle the discussion. Am I correct? Right. Yes, that's correct. It's so I, if I we set policy if we so that everybody knew down the line all the people who work on agendas and have things ready for us. 
So I think we, if we discussed it and decided on exactly what procedure we would like to take, take a few minutes at, at, at a workshop meeting to discuss it. That's all I'm asking us to do. I think the, any, any way that we can to make the process better, um, we certainly should do it. I mean, I'm more than listen. I don't, I, I don't know how much we can change from what we're doing, but if anybody has suggestions how to change for the better? Why don't we put it on for a discussion item? Workshop at it? The, yeah. <laughs> Is that at the June, uh, I'm sorry, at the July 12th Whenever meeting? Whenever it fits in. Yeah, please. we'll see what that agenda looks like. If not, it'll be on August. in August. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Deputy Mayor? I'm good, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I'd, I'd like to read a letter. Uh, it was just to the mayor office. and town council. Uh, it was sent to us from a, a friend of mine I've been in the pleasure of working with for about six years now up here. It's from our uh, township clerk, Bruce Davis. This is being township clerk, I must say, has been a rewarding and extraordinary journey. The adventure, however, has reached an end. It's with great humility and appreciation for the opportunity to serve that I take my leave. I'll be retiring on December 1st, 2011, 31 years and 11 months after I started. It has been a great ride. The positive experiences far outweighed the negative and with me for the rest of my life. It's been an honor to serve our great community and its people. I would like to believe that I left a positive mark on Howe's history, but in the end that will be for the others to judge. Thank you. Yours truly, Bruce Davis, Township Clerk, the Township of Howe. I'll judge him. He's been an outstanding clerk. I know he's been here for a long time, and he's been instrumental in helping governing bodies for many, many years. And personally, he's been a, a great aid to me in understanding the ins and outs of government and different things that need to be done to help to serve the people of Hal. So I will miss him. Um, I'm sure we will talk about this in the future. But I wanted to read that publicly this evening because uh, there's other things we have to do later on. And I thought maybe the horse should come before the cart. So, he's been a great public servant and I wish him well in his retirement. We have some other work to do right now. Um, why don't we start with, uh, we are blessed this evening with some of Hal's finest, my favorite chief, Chief Carter. <laughs> I feel the love, Chief. Um, there's a swearing in of a, a new officer in Hal Township, and uh, an officer that's been with us for many years who's recently promoted to lieutenant, correct? Um, no further ado, I'd like to come down. Is the mic on, Miss Woman? Yes, it is, in the corner. Okay. The governing body, please join me. Council will want you to relax. I will. Gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, it's hard for me to get down and up again. But I'm with you. Chief, you may burn me. Will you hold the Bible? <laughs> Is this on? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, he checked it before it's on. Are you sure it's on? Can you hear me in the back? I'm not biting. I agree. I'm, I'm sure it's going through the video, the uh, tape, though. Oh, as long as it's on video. Where's your phone? After me, I state your name. I, Richard Robertello. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments. To the same and to the governments. Establish the United States. 
established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people, so help me God. Under the authority of the people, so help me God. I do further solemnly swear. I do further solemnly swear. That I will impartially and justly. That I will impartially and justly. Perform all the duties of the office of. Perform all the duties of the office of police officer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of, it, of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. I'll sign this document. God bless you. Thank you for joining our meeting. Constitution of the United States. So I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of New Jersey. The Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And to the government established in the United States and in this state. And to the government established in the United States and in this state. On the authority of the people, so help me God. On the authority of the people, so help me God. And you further solemnly swear. And you further solemnly swear. I will impartially and justly perform all the duties of the office of. That I will impartially and justly perform all the duties of the office of lieutenant. According to the best of my ability, so help me God. According to the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations. How many years has it been? Uh, coming up on 18. 18. We've been blessed with you for 18 wonderful years. It's a great thing. Chief, would you like to say anything? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, John Storrow here, he's an up and coming uh, officer in the police department. In the next couple of years, I'm sure he's going to rise to a rank higher than lieutenant, and I'm sure he's going to serve the department very well. Rich, uh, he's a wonderful officer from what we hear. You know, all we hear <laughs> is good, wor good words from uh, Alan Hurst and people at Howell Township, so we look forward to working with you, and God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, you at home, that was the fine chief of police at Howell Township, Ron Carter. God bless you. We have a lot of work to do. Hearing your citizens, public comment on consent agenda items. Where's the list up front? That's all. It's probably all the it's for public comment for later. Bless you. Bless you. It's okay. <coughs> this time I'd like to open the meeting to the public. First person, Grace Abramoff. <coughs> I don't know Councilwoman Smith. She put down things. Uh, things. Things. Uh, whatever it is, as long as it's about consent agenda <laughs> items, I'm fine. Pardon me, say that again? Consent agenda items. It says yeah, public okay. hearing end. Yeah, it can yeah, be on any. Any, this okay. is. Okay. It's not at the end. It's at the end. Okay. Just want to make sure I was reading the same thing you were. Yeah. yeah. It is. She's Grace right. Abramov, 26 Glenmore Road. How? When I came in, I thought that we were going to have a rough night tonight, seeing all these police officers, and after last week's meeting, <laughs> 
I Whoa. thought we were in for. But I'm glad, I'm glad it was a good night, a good thing that the police officers were here. Two things I really want to talk about, and uh, an update basically on the North Howell Little League. Have we received, uh, just let me understand this correctly from the beginning. Originally, we made a loan to the North Howell League, or was it a contribution to the North Howell Little League several years ago of $150,000 For the building, remember? Yeah. I don't believe it was a loan or a contribution. You don't believe it was either of them? It's a public building. I believe the governing body at that time chose to pay the money to finish off the building. And in turn, a lease has been signed where they pay us X amount of dollars per year. Correct, Ms. Schlegel? Yes, sir. Okay. So, fine. We received 8000 and change so Ooh. far? I, I, I don't have that information. Um, okay. If, if I knew you were needed it, I would have, you know, no, I'd well, certainly I just give it to you I tomorrow. Maybe, I thought maybe Jeffrey or somebody could wizard that up on the computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I could have a follow-up on that. To Absolutely. Sure. Thank you. I know you will. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Must get tired of getting emails. Uh, and um, I spoke to Helene about this, and Mr. Gatto responded to this, and I think it's something that sh we should discuss just in case the global building does not go through. I sent an email to you all that we should speak about alternatives. I know at one time I had suggested that the engineering building be moved to our building on uh, Squonkum Yellow Brook Road, where the Board of Education was, and that seemed to fizzle out during that time. But just in case we don't go to the global building, what are the alternatives to that? Uh, do you have a plan? I mean, if these buildings are so bad, what is in the recreation building right now? What offices. Just office? Okay. What's in the fire marshal building right now? More offices? Just fire marshals. No. Oh. Are they there all the time? I don't know. Okay. Mr. Gatto enlightened me about the fire marshals and what they do a while ago, but... When they're not out inspecting their yeah, their there's a, there's an office support staff. The mm -hmm. chief is there when he's not out on the road, and mm -hmm. of course there's inspectors that are out on the road. Do you know how many people are in that building? Oh, six or seven? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have it in front of me, so I and I do not like to speculate on numbers, but okay. I can I can certainly provide. <laughs> yeah, well, no, somewhere. I mean it's not it's that that's really not germane to what I'm asking. What would As you like much us to do. I would just like, hypothetically, it, it seems like we're, if the negotiations go the way they seem to be heading, that possibility of us going to the global building. But there's always that except, or okay. in case of, or something doesn't go through. Do you have a secondary plan? We know the engineering building is a done deal. Well, I shouldn't say a done deal, but if the county buys that. So what's... And I know Mr. Gatto responded and Helene responded to my question of what things have been discussed. But they haven't been discussed in public. So I think it's, I won't say a responsibility, but I think it would be a courtesy to let us know what your plans are in case we don't go to the global building. Where do you, what do you plan to do with engineering? What do you plan to do with the fire marshal building? Where, where, do you, where do you expect to put all these people if these buildings are not functional for them? Uh, personally, I'll think about it. That's not acceptable. Well, but I'm not going to tell you I, that I personally have thought about alternative plans, hypothetical, on a lot of different things. The governing body discusses things up here as a body. Mm -hmm. And that's how it works in this form of government. So, But you must have an idea. I don't think that you can just assume that this is going to happen. It may happen, but I also think that you need a backup plan. Nobody does any kind of, you're going to go sell your house or you're going to buy a new house. 
you don't know if somebody's going to buy your house. So you have to have an alternative plan in place just in case. You can't do things blindly or wait to the last minute because things can't be done, I don't think, in a very short period of time. We looked at different alternatives. We've had different studies done, different options about putting money into these buildings, things to that. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. I, I um, think we have the answers you're looking for already. It's, it's the other options that were outlined yeah. in the Neville report. That's so if if the global building did not get purchased, I would imagine, I, I know I would champion this, is that mm -hmm. in a very short period after that decision was made not to buy the global building, we would decide do we do options two or three, meaning mm -hmm. rip down and replace everything or add on and renovate. And both of those options in that report had time frames and mm -hmm. it had a plan to relocate employees. and. I would imagine, at least from my own personal perspective, those are the only two other valid options that I've ever heard throughout the whole process. W there's been some discussion in the past about removing some people from the EPC building if that building was sold immediately, but that would involve the same relocation that's outlined in options two and three in the Neville report, which would mean temporary housing or trailers or so I think all of those things would happen by default and mm -hmm. they're pretty much outlined in that report. But, but relative to some other things that have been discussed, you know, you mentioned one of them about the Board of Ed building. I mean, they have a valid lease on that building. So I don't know that any part of that is available. There's some people that have mentioned certain things about other schools. None of those have ever been made available. So I, as far as I'm concerned, any fallback position is outlined in That's what exactly. I would support doing. And for the record, I've asked the Board of Ed if the global building did was purchased by the governing body to move into the global building with the township. When you have a lease, like they have a lease with us for the building on Squankum Road, okay. do they actually pay us money? Do they actually pay us money? I don't know. No. I don't no. think so. No. No. So no, then I you would have another tenant in the building of Global that doesn't pay rent. A dollar. A uh, dollar. Hold on. Right, but then the savings Utilities. would be vacating the building they're in and hopefully sell Selling that as an asset. And then we also wouldn't have Selling it. Sure. Or yeah. also yeah. having yeah. the ability to... to well, and also have any yeah. utilities or all that, any, anything like that. They would I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Utilities would be shared an expense if that uh, mm -hmm. came to fruition. But I, I just, I agree with the uh, Deputy Mayor that I think that um, this council has, through the Neville report and through the presentations that we've had, outlined different alternatives. I don't think that we haven't uh, looked at other alternatives in this. Question, uh, does the Board of Education pay for the utilities and yes. Yes. in the yes. building now? Yes, they pay for the maintenance and the utilities. I thought they did, but I yeah. wanted to continue on with And I believe the lease is thought. up in 2013 or 14? Yeah, I think it's actually later than that. Yeah, yeah I do too. I think, so. I think it was a longer lease than that. Longer than that? Five or something. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. I think it was something like 20 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't know, but I could certainly look and find out. I thought it was 20 years, too. Yeah, but needless to say, what do I know? I don't know too much, but anyway. I thank you. John Costigan. John Costigan, 214 Birdsall Road. Uh, by the way, last night, good... good uh, Evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, yesterday evening, I was at the zoning board meeting, and the microphone system was weak. So I could hear the, the manager. I heard Mrs. Smith. I heard Mrs. Abramoff. It's hard to hear you guys. I, I couldn't hear what some of you said. Uh, it's been weak. I don't know. I was whining about it last night, too. They were here checking the records. Pardon? Before we started the meeting tonight, they were here working on it. Oh, okay. Mr. Costigan. Yes, ma'am. Um, if they turn it up too much, we get all that feedback. I know that. And then you, that hurts more than mm -hmm. anything else. You don't hear the, through that either. No. They were weaker last night than usual. So, oh. 
Okay. Uh, I hope this is a little better. Yes, some. Okay. Uh, the one thing I want to say is, uh, just as the manager runs a good office upstairs, uh, the township clerk runs a very good office downstairs. They're the first people that people see when they come in to the township to discuss business. They're all professional. I'm very sorry to see uh, Mr. Davis leave. He was always nonpartisan. He was always very businesslike. He was warm. He did a great job here. I'm so happy that Mrs. Uh, Warman will be here because she's also very good. The whole office is very good. Just wanted to say that. Uh, the other thing, I, on my way here, uh, a canine unit passed me up, uh, speed, not speeding, but he was going someplace uh, with the lights on. And I thought to myself, we have these guys seven days a week, 24 hours a day, they're out there to protect us. I don't know where he was going, but he was going down Preventorium Road uh, over the, the highway and I guess that way. But good people. So that's the only two things I want to bring up was I want to uh, recognize Mr. Bruce Davis and uh, heartily welcome Mrs. Wellman to the new position when she gets it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cosby. Okay, at this time I'd like to close the public portion of the meeting. Anybody from the governing body? Well, we have to add on tonight, what, 985? That's correct, Mayor. Is that the only add on? Or? Only add on. Only add on is 985, and that's the MCI guarantee ordinance to put the police cars. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Anybody have any 7A1 through 21 through 21 Anybody have anything they'd like to uh, bring up Hearing none Mayor I make a motion to approve consent agenda item 7A1 to 7A21 uh, Excuse me I'm sorry but um if you notice, we already have a 785 authorized return of long used engineering inspection fees. Am I making a mistake? 7 8? The add on to 785? It's, it's a 9. 985. Nine, eight. Nine, eight, oh, nine. I thought. It's okay. Yeah. I thought we, you said 785. That's okay. Um, we have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have a roll call, please? Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. Motion 7B1 through 7B3, secondhand dealer license for phone zones, secondhand dealer license for swap shop, and 7B3, Move Lake Restoration Wildlife Committee member. I would just like to first uh, thank Ms. Wallman for her uh, work and congratulate her. Thank you. You didn't uh, pass my resolution yet, but thank oh, wait, you. Well, um, as soon as we pass it. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, let's, hold no, the, let's, not let's hold the accolades. <laughs> 7A17. Seven, seven, seven right. 16 oh, and 17 are not on consent. We'll go oh. back to them after the 7Bs, I suppose. Okay. Well, right. yes. See, this is what a good job you did. <laughs> right on top of things. <laughs> okay. 7B1 through 3. I thought I thought that was the case too. Yeah. I was ready to it's say it right. too. It's okay, not the right so thing it wasn't just me. No. Thanks. So okay, good. it wasn't just me. Is that better? Yeah. I'm like screaming here. I can't do screaming? any louder. I don't think you're screaming. Okay. Well, and I've never been accused of not being able to be heard, now. Mr. Costa. Just put it right next to your mouth. I can't. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Seven B one through three. <laughs> Anybody motion? So moved. moved. Second. Can I have a roll call, please, Ms. Wallman? Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. Bill, it's good to exercise your lungs. <laughs> Keep no. working good. You well. Nothing left. Right. I thought we talked. I'll just nod. Now, we do have these things we're not taking action on tonight. No, those two we are. Correct? Mm -hmm. Everything. We're, it's a regular meeting. Everything we're taking action on. We need to go to 7A, 16, and 17. Okay. Should 7A, we, 16, and 17. Should we handle them separately? Yes, right. do them yes. separately. Yes. 7A, 16. Authorize a new alcohol beverage control license for 
Guru Management Scooters Family Restaurant. And this is subject to the meeting or discussion we will have at a future council meeting? That's correct. Okay. Make a motion to approve, Mayor. Second. Second. Have a roll call, please, Ms. Wallman. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. 7A17, authorize the appointment <laughs> of a township clerk effective December 1st. So Motion to approve. Okay, well. Second. With great pleasure. How many, votes, how many <laughs> votes does she need? <laughs> how, how many votes, Ms. King, does she need? Just three. <laughs> All right, so you won't feel bad, will you? A little bit. <laughs> All right, cover roll call, please. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Congratulations and the best of luck and keep on trucking. Thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Gatto? Yes, congratulations, Penny. Thank you. Mayor Walsh? With deep thought, yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. You've done a tremendous job there since I've been here too. That, you know, Mr. Koskin, uh, I think very accurate. Uh, a lot of good work gets done down there in that clerk's office. It's a pretty officially run place. Uh, I'll have to assume it won't miss a beat. Won't miss Mr. a beat. With Mr. Davis on furlough. I can say furlough for him because he don't mind. Congratulations. Well deserved. And I want to personally thank you for uh, assisting me since I've been a new council woman till now. So congratulations. You started working here when you were what age, ma'am? 13. Well, five. 16. 16 years old you started working here. Oh, boy. Here goes the math. <laughs> how many years is it? No. It's been a lot. <laughs> no. I know how many. Yeah. <laughs> we know how many, but that can get you in trouble. <laughs> but that's great. I mean, that's a, that's a great thing, working your way up mm -hmm. through the ranks from, from starting at 16 years old as a, as a temp when you were in high school. That's correct. That's excellent. That's fabulous. Congratulations. Don't get much better than that in government. And there's a lot of faults in government, folks. Just doesn't, this does not have to be one of them. <coughs> okay. Where are we going now? 7C1. I think I gave everyone back up from Jack Mallon mm -hmm. on this. It's really just um, uh, for, really at this point, just to protect ourselves. Our escrow fees fall below uh, to a deficit number. We can't, we have no way to recoup that. Now we can issue summonses for that at the very least. I'm very glad, if I may stay, I'm very glad to see this because um, having spent a lot of years on the planning board, we suffered through, uh, and what good is, not giving permits if the houses are already built or whatever. That's correct. So this is uh, this would be great because then the taxpayers don't have to end up filling the sure. bill. Sure, and our professionals get reimbursed, and right. nobody's sure. left holding the bag. That's right. Because there was we also would be left holding there the bag. Just so you, right, exactly. There was also um, a recommendation from the planning board, and I know it's not on the agenda right now, but about amending the checklist for yes. a new um, item from the master. Plan Review Committee, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the uh, Environmental uh, Inventory Resource. So we already, we yeah, we could do that administratively. I don't think we have to do that um, by way of ordinance. I think I can just have eco, just for the record, uh, just add that one item on our checklist so we don't have to go through that whole process since it's already part of the master plan. But I will call and find out. And if, it, if and when it does happen, I'll certainly let the governing body know. Great. Thank you. Don't be blaming me. I, I Wouldn't even dream of it blame each other. <laughs> All right, we okay with that? Any other discussion? It's good. We're good. Yes. So we'll go forward with an ordinance? Mm -hmm. with, yes, with the escrow fees, yes. Right. That will be on for introduction for July 12th, adoption on August 16th. The other item, um, the checklist item, I don't know why that's not on this agenda, but it somehow maybe got lost in the shuffle. But do the two need to be done together or no? Nope, not at all. I just wanted to let everybody know that we're going to amend the checklist just to include that item because I know that the planning board had sent that recommendation down. They're two separate issues. Completely. Two totally separate issues. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, and just for the record, this the next item that you're looking at is um, seven. Uh, I'm sorry, eight A one. This was the background check that was on last week. What I would request that you do is vote this one down and introduce the one that's on for introduction. 
simply because these, the one that we would be introducing um, really clarifies what Karen Molino and Councilman Gatto had w were looking for in the last ordinance. It was there. I just made it a lot clearer. Good. Deputy Mayor Gatto. Deputy Mayor Gatto, sorry. Yeah. Bill is fine. That, that's all I have. So just so you know that 8A1, that would be my recommendation because you're going to have another introduction. Mm -hmm. Well, we should open the public hearing, yeah. though. That's right. Okay. Let's go right. Public hearing ordinance 8A1, amend chapter 115, criminal history background. This ordinance amends the procedure for fingerprinting and criminal background checks for volunteers of youth and nonprofit organizations. Ordinance number 0 1 18 18 introduced and passed the first reading on 61411 and published according to law. Is now being taken up for further consideration of public hearing. Affidavit of publication of this ordinance in the Asbury Park Press issue of 61711 is submitted as noted that a copy of the ordinance has been posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building that copies available to the general public upon request. <coughs> Ms. Rowan, would you please read the title of the ordinance? An ordinance of the Township of Howell amending Chapter 115 entitled Criminal History Background Check of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Howell. This time I'd like to open the meeting to the public. If anybody would like to speak about this ordinance? That's okay. <laughs> okay, that's all right. State your name and address, time. please. Thanks. My name is Kim Roberts. I live at 8 Diamond Lane. Hello. Hi. Um, I belong uh, to the uh, Howell Girls Softball League, mm -hmm. and we have over 100 coaches. I'm responsible for the fingerprinting. Um, so I know you said you're going to vote this down, but I just wanted to bring up a couple things that I see as, you know, just kind of some issues for us. Um, there are several people who come into our league. Um, that they're willing to volunteer and that's sometimes a challenge in and of itself mm -hmm. um and in the past we've always had the ability to use fingerprinting that's been done through other leagues little leagues whatever because it's all been centralized through KidSafe. um without KidSafe or a central database um those people who are now dedicating their time their effort their energy um are going to be forced to go for fingerprinting time and time again no, if no, there no. is no, no central no. database. No, there there is a central database. If they're already fingerprinted, they should be able to have access to that or whoever, whatever organization they they um, were fingerprinted for can just give you a list certifying this is the this is when they were fingerprinted and it's however old it is. They don't have to because in, in the the we didn't use KidSafe in the past. I mean, oh. when we first started the fingerprinting, we never had a KidSafe. Yeah. So what... So what would happen is, as um, Ms. Kingdon said, is that if you're fingerprinted for another organization, there should have some something that shows that. Because so right now there is nothing. When I mean, we have nothing for our coaches to show. Oh, I have something on KidSafe saying they're valid through such and such a day. There's no, we don't have any physical anything that proves other than the date on KidSafe. We have nothing. Well, what's going to happen is, are you getting your own like VRN number? Yes, we so got you'll one. be provided with that as well as the other organizations, so that information will be there. So you can look up by the VRN number. So if somebody comes to us from Pop Warner, we can look up under their VRN and confirm. Yes. Ah, okay. So that part wasn't and, shared and with us, so that's good. I mean, what will happen is there should be some cooperation, and I know collaboration amongst the sports organizations, which I know they all work pretty well together. And you know, you may want to. Um, you know get that relationship with some of the other organizations and okay I had something. seen something with Asbury Park Press that you guys were going to be doing yeah. some sort of database we which are. I assume was similar but I was curious what the our league's liability would be accepting somebody else's sort of background check. Right. well as long as you could look it up you have access to that information there isn't there would be okay. no liability. so we'll all be part. able to look it up yep. by VRNs okay so then we are we got good that's good mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Thank you for coming. All right. Anything that's about keeping our children safe is welcome <laughs> in these rooms. Anybody else in the public? You want to speak on this? Yes, sir. Uh, Hold on. You got to speak into the mic, sir. I'm sorry. My name is Jim Trobo from Pinelanders Soccer. Um, so we're, we're just reading the, the ordinance. Um, so 
Can you tell me how is this being, the information being distributed about how the process will work? Well, what we're doing okay. is we're requesting. All right, one second. Sir, if yep. you could, when you speak, speak into the mic sure. and turn and look. It right. doesn't pick it up. No question problem. The question is how is the information about how the process will work being distributed? Oh, how is it being distributed? Mm -hmm. What would you recommend? I'd recommend a written document that explains it. Absolutely. So, pr for example. No, I mean, we're looking for, I'm, I'm not being, you know, I'm, I'm asking for your recommendation because right. I know how, I personally know how involved Mr. Treadwell is, and I would certainly welcome his recommendations for how we distribute that information. Mm -hmm. Because because I'm hearing very little so far. We have a very short time before our next season opens. Um, I mean, I'm looking at things and going, well, okay, so you, you just talked about being able to share information among the organizations. Is there a limit on which organizations can share that information? No, what we're going to do is, um, Mr. Uh, the Deputy Mayor is the liaison with the Rec Committee, and what they've requested is that each organization will provide the township with their list of people that have been fingerprinted. Okay, your approved list, your list of your coaches, and have they, you're required to do that to provide the township right. with that list. At that point, the township is going to post that on their website where okay. where you'll be able to, the parents or whoever will be able to go on and check for their coach and make sure that they're, and that they're, that they've been fingerprinted. And the, it is the league's responsibility, as it's always been the league's responsibility to ensure that your coaches are fingerprinted. But, so the information is coming back from whoever you're getting to do your your, your, your background yeah, check. You're doing well, your background. Well, we don't have the ability to do a background check. We have to use another organ organization right, to but, do that. Right, but you're yeah. certifying. You're certifying. Not a formal list. Right. Not a, not something um, from the from that person that's doing the fingerprinting. But as so you're... Let's say Sagan Morpher, right? As, a, as a, one of the... Right. But as your right. league, okay, mm -hmm. you will provide the township with a list of coaches... I mean, we, we trust that you're doing your job, and, right. you know, of course, you want to do your job also, right. so we know that, and, and we trust each league to be responsible, that you will provide the township with the list of coaches or volunteers, and when they've been fingerprinted, and you'll provide that for the ta to the town. And then the township will post that on, on their website for each anyone year. to but see. But other than the posting of it on the website, that was always... That's happening. correct. Just the method on which they chose to no, do it right. might have changed. Correct. No, I don't think so. The, the, the way that this has worked in the past has been that we asked our coaches to get fingerprinted. Um, and it's up to, the, up to the individual organizations who paid for that, how they did that. We actually paid for our right. coaches to get fingerprinted. The information came back to an organization called KidSafe, right. which put the information on a website. Now, we could check um, the KidSafe website and find out whether the, the coach had actually been fingerprinted, what the status was, and so on. Um, but we were not responsible for anything beyond checking that he, his name appeared on the... But you were always responsible for making sure that the coach was fingerprinted. Sure, and we, and we did that. But so it would be the same thing except same thing. you're not using a third party. That's right. I mean, you can use a third party if your organization would like to lose a third, use a third party, but the township is not, can well, no longer pick up that cost. No, well, the, the co I mean, the cost is, is one issue. It's mm -hmm. the organization of it that's a different issue. I mean, the cost was not huge. It was, I think, $12 per person, right? Well, that's a lot of money for no, understood. when and you're and so paying for the, all the organizations. That would not be a huge amount for, for the clubs to pick up. Right. But maybe. I mean, that's, that's a different right. issue. But the organization is a, is a major separate issue. But we've done this before <coughs> KidSafe. Well, yes, we didn't do it very well, right? Right, but we've done it before <laughs> KidSafe. KidSafe so didn't do it much better, but they did do it better. Exactly, so to pay $12 a person but the township was the clearinghouse for the information. Now, my question, like, one question I have is, okay, so if we tell the, um, the, the coach that he has to get fingerprinted, uh, that coach goes and gets fingerprinted. Now, my understanding is that we can choose the organization he uses, one of which would be potentially Sega Morpho. Absolutely, right? yes. So who does Sega Morpho give the information to? You're going to have a get a VRN number. Right, that's, that doesn't tell me who he gives the information to. Does, so does They'll the send it m to, to you. To your organization. Okay, right. so, so now we have privacy issues because we have... Uh, information coming into whoever the, the no, organization. You're only getting the information. You're only getting the fact that they've been fingerprinted. You're not getting their criminal background check. Okay, where does that go to? They maintain it. I mean, unless there's an issue, they're you're not going to be alerted to the fact that there's something mm -hmm. on their record. Okay, so if they if there is an issue, then who do they report that to? You. Then we do get the information. No. Right. No. Well, yes, that's the information that people need to keep most private, right? I understand that. <laughs> 
Right, you're going to get that information. We'll get bad information, no good information. Okay, so now we have a privacy issue because we, because we make our own decisions. Yeah. When you get for you still have to protect the information. You're, you're, t you're saying that 20 different organizations are going to be responsible for maintaining private information about negative stuff that's gone on with it for, a, um, uh, for a, a citizen. But we never did that. We, we, we were never, we were never the recipient of the rejection. And we, we were back in the day. Yes. Uh, Mr. Right. Treadwell is correct. We, we did get that information. However, we also told the organization. Right. That, that there was that they couldn't. All you told the organization was that they could not use that volunteer. Right. Well, we would certainly hope that who's ever in the administration of the organization right. is is capable and of being an administrator of an organization, do, do and they know that those confidential. This is not an issue for the town. It's an issue for the organization. But so they're gonna you as an administrator of an organization have to take on the responsibility of being confidential. But you, you're putting a process in place without much discussion with the organizations that requires, I, I don't know how many, let's say 20 organizations to each have a, a process that during the summer when some people will be away, for example, during the summer when um, they have to take information, they have to do certain things, they're legally bound to, put, to, to take confidential action uh, in a short time frame and the right now, I don't hear any process being well, put in I place think, to do that. I think what it is is the pro the only process that we're doing is we're not doing KidSafe. That's what we're doing. So yeah. we're <laughs> we are changing the ordinance. We we are not funding the KidSafe. KidSafe, in our opinion, did not provide us I agree. with. Okay, so we are no longer using KidSafe. Right. So now each organization is being held responsible mm -hmm. for their organization only. Right. Okay, to be sure to ensure that their uh, volunteers are fingerprinted. How they do that is up to the organization. We all, the township is only involved in the sense of we are requiring the organization, no different than before, to certify to us that mm -hmm. all of your volunteers have been fingerprinted. If yeah. you choose to do that through KidSafe, that's fine. Or if you choose to do it, that's a, that's a decision for the organization. We're not legislating that. All we're legislating is that you need to provide us with a list of your mm -hmm. volunteers and the fact as whether they've been fingerprinted. That's all we, we want. Right. At one time, you were really, really concerned about privacy. I don't hear that concern now. There's not that concern right now. Which is a shame because privacy is very important and more so than ever it, but, it was before. But... But it's you're you're it correct, but that's your, your concern. concern. But you're putting it that that on people that you don't know. Do you trust every organization in this township has the ability and has the I absolutely I do. Doing it? I have to, I so. and okay. I I would hope to think that each organization's president or you know whatever, however their administration you is set up. Are you are you requiring the organizations to actually certify that they're re ready to do that and how they will actually keep that information private? No, we're not. Do you think you should? I think no, you should. I don't. Okay, I think, th I think that should be done. I think it's very important. Go ahead. You can answer. Yeah, just for the record. The, our police officers reviewed the ordinance as it's written, mm -hmm. and they were fine with it and comfortable with the way it was written. They had no objections to it. And in terms of what we're doing is, you know, we're not reviewing this information. We're leaving it up to the organizations, which is something that they have done in the past. So, so, you, so now, so if I have a volunteer who, I understand that you're changing the requirement now for background check to be three, from four years to three years, is that correct? Every four years for a federal and a state? Correct. Is that correct? Okay, so if I have a volunteer who has been um, a member of one organization in one season and then changes to another organization or is, no, is a member of two organizations, um, following season, same season, whatever, uh, would, would then will we accept the, the information from the first organization, yes. say that he's been fingerprinted? Yes. Okay, so the, yes. and the township is, is being the clearinghouse for that. Yes, what, what will happen is each organization will submit the list of their volunteers and whether they've been fingerprinted. That list will appear on the township website. Really, one of the reasons is so that as a parent, right. you know, you can go on and check. And we'll have the date because the organization will provide the township with the date yeah. that the person was finished. So, so will you be providing a standardized uh, way for the uh, organizations to give you that information? 
we will take the org we we will take that information any way that the mm -hmm. organization wants to give us that doesn't sound very good to me uh, i mean you, well, how, how are you going to process it you're going to take it on, on paper for example we're going to get something from the organization. I, I'm not really well, you're understanding taking, you're what taking, the. You're taking a list I mean, does it all have to be on yellow paper, double no, spaced? I, I don't. I don't know well, what you're asking me. Well, really. you're going to take that information and put it on a website. You're going right. to accept it on paper. Right. Names, addresses, phone numbers. From How the organization. Administrator of the right. organization. Right. Correct. So then you're going to have people rekey that information into uh, onto your website. No. We. I, I don't. You're, don't really you're going to put it. The way I understood it is you're going to take a name, the organization for which they applied for and were fingerprinted for, and when that expires. Mm -hmm. We're not putting people's personal information no, on there. Well, um, the, the question is what is the format that you're going to put that information on the web page? You're going to need a name. Well, we can add first we, we're name, we're a last name, an yeah. organization name, and a date. Okay, so if my name is Pat Murphy, then how does that help? Which it isn't. But if my name is Pat Murphy, and I see it. Right. And an or right. organization is irrelevant. How does it's it not this, help? This, this information lasts for four years because there are two Pat Murphys in town. There are two Bill Ingrams in town. But, but we are not the gatekeeper of that. It, the only purpose how, how of does it being... How know if they see the name Pat Murphy up on the website that that, that person is a, is a uh, legitimate coach? They you have two Pat Murphys sure. in your organization? Yes. We, ha we don't right now, but we have had. And two Bill Ingrams. Okay, then how about you guys uh, supply us initials. with an identifier? My guess would be, I'm first sure initial. that they probably have a mi middle right. initial. I mean, if, if you know you've got that, and why and wouldn't and you? And the names are the same. Uh, there is the, the name, and there are okay. really fathers and sons. There's all kinds of issues here that have been... No, there's not issues. Yes, there are. Okay. The governing body has made a decision that we're not going to be in the business of being the gatekeeper and have total liability on the citizens of Howe Township for this. I mean, you're also going to have to police yourself some. It's not, uh, I mean, as the president of the organization, when you have everybody in a room, has everybody here been fingerprinted? Is anybody here not on the list? Okay? And if everyone says they have been, I mean, Is that what, good are enough? what are we all supposed to do? I mean, wh what well, do you expect? Well, 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 I'm asking you. Uh, well, well you, you put in a process that actually, by the time it was it was disbanded, mostly worked. The, the kid safe was horrible, but apart from that, it mostly worked. Um, that so now you're taking that that process that mostly worked, and you're putting it in the hands of different organizations who you have no idea whether they're going to be able to administer it properly or not. But, but how did we know that everything that was going into kids safe was right? It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it, didn't, oh, 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 it mostly okay. worked. It didn't uh, work uh, completely. Right. What is it that you would like from us? I'd, I'd like to, to go back to, to a, a, a put a process in place before you pass this ordinance and push every organization in Howell to, to uh, put in process, uh, 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 to put in place a process over the summer when we've got seasons coming up a couple of months from now. I'd like to have a, to, to take some time and get the process right and understand what, how the information is being shared, that when we see the information, it will be accurate, it will be unambiguous, and it will the, s the system will work. Would you, pr would you prefer that we didn't post the information? No, the, inf the information is posted. It's not posted well right now, because if you go and look at what KidSafe have on there, on there and I know we're getting rid of it, but the, we, I talked about this several years ago, and nothing changed. Um, but the, the, the should every coach, every volunteer should have an identifying okay. number. That, uh, that uh, uh, I have a little solution right mm -hmm. here. Um, Mr. Slagle, Stephen, if it was posted by name, organization, and their address, <coughs> I don't think there's two Pat Murphys at the same address. There could be, father and son. Well, no. uh, of course there could be. Junior, senior. Uh, uh, I, I, I mean, yeah, I understand. Uh, okay. Anything Oop, else you'd like from us, sir? I, 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 what I'd like to see is a process put in place where we discuss it and discuss and get the, the wrinkles out of it before we put it, we just assume that everybody's going to do this right. The, t the, the township, t if, you, if you say, for example, that you're going to take uh, lists on paper from all the organizations and you ha know how many coaches there are in Howell and, you, and your department is going to take all those names, key them in so that they can appear on a website and everything will be accurate. I don't think that's going to happen. You can do a PDF. Them on the yeah. PDF and put it on the website. I don't <laughs> And then, no, so well then you, whether you, ex if you're going to put data out there for, for that organizations are then going to have to go and look at, it needs to be alphabetic. It needs to be organized. Why? I don't 
Because people have to be able to find the information they're looking for. You have to be able to find it. Yeah, why are sure. you dropping this all on yeah. us, sir? Because you're saying that you're going to make that information available. You're going to make it available in a collection of, of, uh, right. of right. photocopied but PDF we also, files? We also, and I think, you're s I, think I understand what you're saying, because you, you, and I appreciate that you're coming here truly with the best interest of the children. You want to make sure the organization is doing everything right, and I, I appreciate it. And I think these comments that people are bringing in are, it's important. It's important us for, to get this right. Um, we do have the ability, just so you know, on our website to search. There's a search, so you could put someone's name in and 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 do it that way. It so could be a PDF word searchable, searchable document. Right. Yes. If it's w one document, but you still have to get the information into the PDF. You want one document. So what I just I want to make sure <coughs> this is important. Yep. I know it's very important to you, and I think the good news is the information has gotten out today and probably before today because we're here. You're the only a person who's here. Um, to talk about this. So we're here to try to get it right now. Um, what we have in place now, specifically, have you read it? Is there anything that we can do differently? You just want more time? Have I read the ordinance? Yes. Yeah, I've read the ordinance. Okay. The, o the ordinance just says what, what has to be done. It doesn't explain how it's going to be done. Okay. What, what do you think specifically, what can we do today? I, today, I would, I would defer passage of the ordinance or, or, or give, it, give some time before it takes effect to allow a process to be put in place that all the, all the sports organizations can, uh, can come up with and agree to and adhere to. How are we going to do I, that? I, we can I, do I, I, what? How are we going to dictate the 20 different organizations for them to follow the process? Well, I, I don't well think for example, if you're taking data, then, t then specify the format you want the data in. Why? Yeah. Why not? They can scan 20 documents, put them in. And how are people going to access that? They're going to go through 20 different documents? And, and because if I'm going to a Pop Warner game and my kid is out on the field and I have a question <coughs> about a coach, I'm going to go to the HAL website, I'm going to look at HAL Pop Warner, I'm going to look for the person whose name I think it is, Tom Smith, okay. I hope there's not a Tom Smith in HAL. If his name isn't on the list, I'm going to bring it to the okay, appropriate so person. So you're, so you're thinking about how a parent can possibly find out the, the list from his organization, but I'm sure. thinking about well, the the organizations trying to figure out whether the 150 odd coaches yeah, they have. from your records, the no. same records that you were giving in to supply KidSafe. No, no, no. no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. When you turned in information for KidSafe, <laughs> right. you had to take your information that you accumulated it mm. and put it into KidSafe. Right, okay. So I think I am missing a point then. So, so my, my point, my question uh, that I asked earlier was, are we allowed to share that information? Are we allowed to get that information from the township from other organizations, right? And, and I think you're yes. saying, no, we're not getting that, that information from other from the township about the coaches who have already been fingerprinted in the last three years by other organizations. Oh, that's I what you want. Wouldn't, wouldn't you think the other organizations would want to share that collectively with each other to help defer that your own costs? That would be nice. So, so, now, so now don't we have, uh, you, do we have a system in place to do that? Yeah, it's a phone. You pick up the I'm phone serious? and say, well, but... But why, but why would you we do that? Well, uh, that's why I understood that the township was actually putting together a, was taking that information and making it available. Yeah. Who has been so thinking about sorry. So I guess, I guess I'm missing your point in the way you plan to do this. So a lot of people say government gets involved in too many things. Okay, and they over-legislate. They make us do this and they make us do that. We're trying to simplify the process at the same time serve the township residents by putting it all on, on the website where they can go and look. Um, I don't I, I don't know what process <coughs> you would want us to put in place. I'm not sure if I'd agree with it. And, then, and I also may have 10 other organizations come here and say that's too much. I remember the fights over kids safe. Me too. Okay. I mean there was there was mayhem that everyone was going to have to be fingerprinted. Okay, who's going to pay for it? Uh, why do we have to go someplace to get it done? Bring people in. I can't make it at that time. I work night shifts. We heard everything under the sun. I mean, uh, I wish we had a perfect solution to what you would like to see done. I mean, to me, I think it would be simple. Name, address, organization, well, boom. Well, I think what maybe we're missing, and maybe there's a communication, That's we right. are doing it on our website as a courtesy. Yes. Yeah. It's not part of the process. And maybe that's where 
we're we're having yeah. some confusion. That, I think that is that is a confusion. Yeah. yeah. So you're not going to provide something in the same. I mean, I, and you know, I, I've. I don't like, like we're going to that it be not going to do what kids say. That's better, correct. Do it better. That's, that's correct. correct. The only reason that was added is because certain people had a concern that I guess with KidSafe there was access where someone was able to see that information like a parent and was able to verify whether someone they saw was approved. So that was the only reason of putting it onto the website, not that it was the clearinghouse for the organizations. Right, then, and then in fact what you, what you would be doing, the, t the organization could do itself and do it faster. That's correct. Right. Right. So we can well, put on a list of people we've yeah. seen. But there is an advantage of it to you because if you happen to be the 17th or 18th group that turns it in and you see 15 of them posted and you well, can go I mean except yeah, I, I, know, I know that's difficult. Us to look through. right but <laughs> but I mean it is yeah. a way for you to you would have access to the information the same as everybody else it it sounds like it's the same process as what they do with like coaching certification with NISCA right if if I was a football coach and I needed NISCA certification I know they don't all need it right. but you need it for baseball so Pop Warner, whoever coordinates that, would pick up the phone and call House South Little League and say, when's the last time this guy had his card because he can't find it? And right. if that card was valid, he didn't have to take it again. Correct. See, see one of the, the big issues here is that well, one of the big things that the Kids Safe process did, at least within HAL, you had one uh, place to go and get fingerprinted, and you had one place to go and look for it. And it was alphabetic. It wasn't right, but it was alphabetic. Okay. So the... the the coach or the organization or whoever spent the forty, the twenty-six dollars, got fingerprinted, and it was once they were done, that was good for four years, and anybody could find it. So, n so now what we're saying is that the organizations are individually responsible, and unless he, that coach can prove to the second organization he's volunteering for that he's in good shape, that he's been fingerprinted, then he has to go and do it again. Uh, so now I think I heard you say, and I, we were outside actually discussing sure. this, um, but I think I heard you say the sports organizations all have good um, relationships and everybody shares everything. We, and I don't think that's true. I mean, we have good relationships, but we don't have the sports federation anymore. There is no central point. I don't right, know. Right, but I think that what uh, the deputy mayor said is I I'm sure that if you picked up the phone and called the president of House Central Little League, Right. There would be no problem. I'm sure if everybody's got that, that yeah, amount of time no to spend. Yeah, but no one's going to want to host their own volunteer. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, so, I mean, and, I, and I think really I, I, your no, conversation. I, I but it's, I, still, it's still a lot of information to be shared around but a I, lot I of organizations. I also think your conversation could perhaps be championed among the sports organizations, not not the town council. Yeah, no, understood. You know, where, where you may all agree to use Sage and Morpho and, and maybe you'll, use, you'll all use KidSafe. You know, I mean, like that's a decision that the sports organizations will now make, as opposed to the township making. But, but we have, I mean, right now we have no central organization for the sports organizations. With the, the demise right. of the sports federation, there is no way. So we we would actually have to put something in place to do that, and this is a really short time when uh, people are going to be. Yeah, aware. I, I don't think that you'd really <coughs> have to do that. I mean, I think if you, like I said, if you called or like the deputy mayor had pointed out, if you call you know, the other presidents. I mean, I, I think everybody's willing to work together. I mean, I would be, uh, I will tell you, I would be shocked if there would be a president of any of the organizations that are out there that would not be willing to work with each other. And I think oh. I can fairly say that. I, I, I think I, I agree completely. With confidence. But it, it's just, it's a, it's a <coughs> lot of sudden extra overhead and time and everything else that, that uh, organizations did not have before. And I understand, okay, the township right. wants to get out of it. But a centralized way of doing this would be much better than just expecting every every club suddenly, without no, I any, any written. That. I, I know there was there was a, a quick email went out a couple of months ago, but that's all as far as I know. That's all we've seen, and that in the ordinance, the ordinance has been stuff taken out of it, not stuff put into it, um, and it, it seems a very quick and very um, you know abrupt uh, way of, uh, without necessarily understanding that the organizations are equipped to do what you're expecting them to do. Uh, I, I think. Uh, uh, you're putting you're putting a very large burden, and I, I understand it better now. What what your intents were? They're not even as as right. good as I thought they were yeah. <laughs> from that perspective. Okay. So we, you know, we we'll deal with it. I uh, would be very uh, interested to hear though if you didn't get that cooperation, no, not not the single any group out, it, but I think we have to put together an organization that will okay. that will enable it because uh, you know that doesn't exist today. 
I, I have n we don't yeah, even have I, I, a central email list of all of the that. clubs. Anything that that uh, yeah. the, that uh, puts would that be available together. through the rec department? The email addresses, absolutely. Right. So they would be able to reach out to the recreation director and get any information they want on another yeah. organization. Yeah, that, and that would be useful because that's you know current because uh, that stuff people just use n lists of names of email addresses. Certainly. that stuff gets out of date very quickly. Yeah. Can I just ask uh, one question? So just so I'm mm -hmm. clear on the. Uh, in terms of timing issue, because I sure. understand that's a concern of yours, and I appreciate <coughs> that. You, in terms of the people we could actually be concerned with, because most of your coaches are probably repeat customers. No, correct? no, there's a lot of turnover. There's a lot of turnover, okay. and not only is there a lot of turnover, but you don't know. You're still because we're a soccer organization, right? Which is not every adult in in America is not aiming to be a soccer coach. You want to be a baseball coach, right? Um, but so we are still recruiting coaches to our organization a few days before the start of the season. Okay. Underst I, I yeah. actually got, yeah. uh, my kids are in Pinelanders right. and okay. I got lots of emails and it's a terrific organization right. and I understand you. your concern. Right. I just was curious about the, the volume, just so it's I knew. We, we have typically around 140 to 150 coaches, uh, head coaches and assistant coaches. And the, the percentage of There's people that you'd be concerned about for purposes of the fall, because that's what you're worried you, about. The people you're concerned about are the people who are new and the people who are uh, have expiring so you're talking 50%, 25%, that's why I'm just trying to get uh, I, I would probably say something like 40% okay. you have, because you have renewals as well. It's okay. not just new coaches. Understood. So then it's four years, you know, now it's three years. <laughs> so now we've actually got more coaches expiring than we would have done. When does the three years take effect? That takes effect now? But they would still have to be getting well fingerprinted the no matter what. Uh, yeah, what they're going to do with whether or not they'd have to be getting fingerprinted. The, um, I, they're going to be introducing, they're going to be introducing, they're going to be voting this particular ordinance down. They're introducing another ordinance that's on the back of the agenda. Uh, and then they will adopt it on July 12th and then 20 days after passage of the ordinance is when it would go into effect. Okay, and the, and the new one says th three years, right? Yes. yes. Okay, okay, so that means anybody who was fingerprinted three years ago now has expired when they thought they had another year, right? As of <coughs> July 22nd, right. correct. Right, for our, our next season. Okay. All right, I thank you. Are uh, you going to be sticking around for a little while? Because I, I want to get your information because I do sure. want to talk to you. Sure. Yeah, that'd be okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir, just so you know, it's not three years as of July 22nd. If somebody was fingerprinted last year, they have two more years. Sure. With it. I understand that. But, but anybody who was, who was fingerprinted four years ago, right. now oh, they. Or they okay. yes. I get it. Well, anybody who was fingerprinted three years ago yes. thought they had another year, now that's they've suddenly think. expired. That's correct. Right. Hold on to okay. Thank you. Any council person like to speak about this ordinance? Need a council person to make a motion? Make a motion. We do not approve the ordinance. Second. You got to read it. Roll call. It's not going to get Roll posted. call, Mayor. Yeah. Yes. Roll call, please, Ms. Wilson. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. I do not have any of two. I'm going to write the only one. You got it? I got it. 882 establishes the Department of Community Development and Land Use. This ordinance creates a Department of Community Development and Land Use, which shall oversee the Division of Engineering, Division of Land Use and Planning, Division of Uniform Construction Code. Ordinance number 0-11-19 introduced and passed the first reading on 6-14-11 of public according to law is now being taken up for further consideration of public hearing. After David of publication, this ordinance has been parked press issue of 6-17-11 is submitted as noted a copy of the ordinance with a post on the bulletin board. The municipal building that copies are available to the general public and palm request. Ms. Walton, will you please read the title of the ordinance? An ordinance of the Township of Hal amending and supplementing Article 5 entitled Administrative and Organization and Article 6 entitled Departments and Adding Chapter 2-35 entitled Department of Community Development and Land Use and placing the Division of Engineering, Division of Land Use and Planning and Division of Uniform Construction Code under the direction of the Department of Community Development and Land Use of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Hal. This time I'd like to open the meeting to the public for anybody would like to speak on this ordinance. 
I'd like to close the public portion of the meeting. Anybody from the governing body? If there are none, I'd make a motion that ordinance number zero dash. Oh, I have. Oh, absolutely. Sorry. Um, Councilwoman Smith. Yes. I, uh, and this is what I was referring to before. Mm hmm I have no problem with the whole idea as we discussed it. I have some concerns with some verbiage. Um, I think I know its intent, but I'd like to be really clear and maybe some things need to be clarified. And that's, um, that's why I thought that if, if an ordinance that was as um, changing as this one is, uh, if uh, we should discuss all the, the verbiage in it, the ordinance itself, not the idea, not the, not the goal, but mm -hmm. the, the ordinance sometime, because um, uh, uh, that might save a step if we, at a, at a workshop meeting, discussed that and then went forward with a, a, a introduction and then adoption later. Okay, so we would need the ordinance, though. Yes. Well, we discuss it. That's right. But how would, how would the manager or the or, or, or our attorney know to draw up the ordinance if we didn't tell them to? Well, um, the, yeah, but a that's a, another right. step. We, we'd already done that at discussion. Yeah. Bill, you were going to say something, Bill? No, I, from the conversation that I had with Mrs. Smith earlier today is it, the, the conversation that I think you're looking for, and then when we talked about the ordinance today, I... I do understand a little bit of it. We, we knew about this ordinance however long ago, mm -hmm. and it was sent to us in one right. form or another, an email, probably before the workshop meeting occurred. Or, or it could have. I, I don't remember if it did or not. But, but sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I think, I think what would be helpful is at the point of workshop, if we had it available in ordinance form to have already discussed it to be prepared to ask the question at workshop because this particular one and again maybe this is a bad example because I I do know at least I had seen it earlier that it was introduced at the workshop meeting right. so to have gone through all the pages mm -hmm. so I'm not I don't know if it's that process that has to change or if it's the all of our responsibilities to make sure we get it sooner to be prepared to discuss it at the workshop meeting that that to me that seems a little bit more of the process and I think in, in Councilwoman Smith's issue here is mm -hmm. I think she got it on the Friday before the workshop meeting and it's be introduced on the following yeah. Tuesday without discussion of um, and that's what I tried to do two yeah. weeks ago but because I think the questions that she's going to wind up, I don't want to speak for you, but based on the conversation we had today, it's not really substantial to the scope of the ordinance where we would have discussed that at a workshop meeting. It's, it's relative to the wording in the ordinance. Right. Mm -hmm. well, but we'd have to, uh, it would have another step to the process, because even if you'd given it to us 10 days before. Well, you could have been prepared to ask those specific questions at the workshop meeting. So if we had the ordinance 10 days before the workshop meeting, is, uh, would it, could that happen? Well, I, 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 we think, I, I think, I think, I totally understand what Mrs. Smith is saying. Because yeah. you don't have the ordinance when you're looking at uh -huh. it. However, that being said, you just need to know that if you're doing, you're going to have a discussion. Like this particular ordinance, we had a discussion on May 24th. Then we had, at no, the workshop. Didn't. Not on the ordinance. We didn't just. No, at the work, the first no. time I saw this ordinance. No, no, no. We discuss you, discuss the idea. Yes. We have a discussion on whatever the subject, the subject matter, matter yes. is. Right. On May 24th, we had the discussion on the subject matter. So at that point, then we take direction from the council as to whether move forward to in, in, on that subject. So then we, do, we prepare an ordinance, and it goes in your packet for the workshop meeting. All right, then that's when generally we would know that there's an issue or you know questions or whatever we, and then two weeks later or, or the next meeting we would have so what you're I know what you're saying you would like to well that's what you're going to be discussing at right yeah. July or the August meeting just 
you need to realize that you'll be slowing the process, which is fine. That's a council decision. I'm, I'm just letting you know that what would happen then is we would have a, what you're saying is we would have discussion on the subject matter. Then you would have an ordinance. Discussion on the ordinance. At a regular right. meeting, though, because you don't want to wait to the next workshop meeting because right. this could get into months. Well, I, actually, I, I was think actually thinking a little different. I was thinking be prepared to have the discussion on the ordinance at the, the workshop meeting th this like for example which i have this that that matter on for discussion which is the recommendation from jack mount i've attached i think you have it right. the ordinance that i right. intend to introduce yes so that typically and it really sometimes just depends on the ordinance that we're dealing with that if you're looking at this ordinance i'm giving it to you right now it's on for discussion so i'm giving you essentially what i intend to introduce on july 12th that's really what I think you're looking for, is if, if I'm going to give you 90% of what I think we're going to introduce, this way if you have any changes or comments or what have you, we address that at the workshop meeting before introduction. Unfortunately, it just doesn't always on happen. On that way. It always happen that way. Well, uh, it depends on the subject matter. Right. right. Because sometimes... And the extent. Of it's the extensive. Extent. Yeah, exactly. You know, so... And this is a whole new process to Howell Township. So uh, it's not right. as though it's a, a combination of things and uh, mm -hmm. um, it's not a one or two page thing that uh, longer. Yeah. So right. Right. well, it's on, it's on for discussion between, we're going to talk about it in July. Yes. Right. right. And we'll probably all have some ideas on how to shrink those right. time frames right. for. Right. I, mm -hmm. I, honestly, I think that's more of what this is, is. Right. And at this point, I'd like to address a couple of the things that I, they, you might be able to make me more comfortable or you might, may hopefully they're in, mm -hmm. uh, they're not substantial yeah, changes. Not substantial change. For instance, on page 20, H, review, prepare, and revise. Uh, this is under the um, duties, duties oh. of the um, person who's appointed. Uh, revise zoning ordinances as required. Interact. Uh, with community groups, citizens, and businesses, and business involved with zoning related issues. Now that is a whole, is fine. Now my understanding of that is review, prepare, and revise zoning ordinances as they come from the council. Not well, well, not, not no. just the council, I think, right? It's well, let me you explain get a this process. Department. What we're going to do is we're focusing on, on three things really in this whole uh, department. We're focusing on the customers, which which is the public. Okay, we're focusing on the you know, maximizing the employees, and we're focusing on the township. When I speak about the township, I mean the township ordinances, for mm -hmm. example. So, what what will happen here is through trying to streamline processes or or those types of things, we may discover that we have and I don't know this, I'm just saying this, we may discover that there are either ordinance that we would recommend for the council to implement or ordinances that may need to be revised. We may ask for recommendations. So what this is is actually would be prior to it going to the council. The, the, they would review, recommend, and, and, and prepare. Recommendations then we to would the put it, right, then what we would do is it would go on for discussion and that's to the all council. fine. I have not nothing a can be done. Nothing can be done without the council on this. What I have a problem with is, to me, that doesn't say that. I, I, are, are there some a few words that we could put in there to 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 explain that? I'm not really sure be, um, exactly what you would like in there. Well, they're all because they're going to review, prepare, and revise a, a zoning ordinance as required. Then they're going to bring that to, yeah, they yeah. they can't do it. Only you can do yeah, that. They can't approve it. Well, I know that, but I. But I think I think what the mayor is saying is that it takes that whole aspect when it comes to zoning ordinances. You know, the only way to re to revise a zoning ordinance, there's a whole process. So they could submit the recommendation, but certainly it's never going to be effective until the governing body takes some sort of action. 
Well, just, it shouldn't just it have that word is as recommending to counsel but or just something. As a matter of law, it can't. I understand that it will come to the manager. That's it works for the manager, so it'll come to our office, and then we would, you know, evaluate it obviously and put it on for discussion for the council. It's not unlike what Jack Mallon sent to us saying, "Look, here's a problem. Right. Here's an issue. This is my recommendation." Right. I certainly cannot implement that. So I think the the intent and as a matter of law, this paragraph is only it's very limited. Just I mean we what's what's so I understand. What is your, your problem? My concern with this? is it doesn't, it doesn't specific. It doesn't specifically say that it's as a recommendation to the council oh, or you're concerned before about the or that, it, that so it, it's like it gives a power that it doesn't. But, um, it doesn't. but it doesn't. But, but, but the rest I of the know statute it can, does. but it doesn't say that. Yeah, and but maybe it doesn't say you have the absolute power either, so you know what the law reads. I also know that I've seen a lot, a lot of lawyers over a lot of years uh, interpret uh, ordinances. You'll have a lot of lawsuits from that if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make fun of lawyers. I'll be the one on the opposite side. I'm not making fun of them at can't, all. Can't I'm we just? They abu they've abused our ordinances for the benefit of their own clients. Yes. <laughs> I hate I hate the wordsmith these things, but but can we just say review, prepare, it's and like recommend it's zoning revision? No, it's not. As a yeah, we can. Law, that's and exactly submit to council. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, that's just, just to make council and Smith feel law, comfortable. That's exactly yeah. what it says. Okay. I don't think that's it's fine. a substantial change. Okay. If anybody has the objections or disagrees with me, certainly let me know. But. Okay. I have no problem defending that. If that could be added to Instead of several of those, recommend. just no. Uh, or, or if there was a subheading review or for. I'll just make sure that it's as not as re as required, but review, prepare, and revise zoning ordinances and recommend to council. That's actually okay. Work for us. Yeah, yeah, because you can't. Process. That'll yeah. come up I'll, as an I'll, issue. I'll Review, prepare, Review, recommend prepare, zoning revisions I as required. I think it's not. Um, so that's what they're doing. They're recommending zoning ordinance changes. And the other thing we already pointed out the uh, the error, pre-existing error. Uh, referring to council as appointing uh, members of the environmental commission. Yeah, I, I got that. Okay, that's, fine. that's already uh, that was just really just it should say a mayor instead of council. And just um, again, matter of law. I have been wondering, and I should have asked uh, prior to this. Um, it's my understanding that uh, it's um, the position isn't supposed to cost any more because it's uh, replacing uh, employees that we've lost through attrition. Is it uh, what are those positions that we've we're, of those people? We've lost um, an inspector and and ad, um, administ uh, I don't know the exact from title, but a, a clerical. Someone else just retired also. Yes. From that department, from the yes, from those whatever. yes, yes. That's, that's strictly what I from oh no, strictly from those departments. That's yeah, correct. Because I wouldn't want to deprive somebody right. else. And what what would the salary range be for this person? We're it's going to be it's not going to be a hired a full it's not going to be a full time township employee. Okay. We're going to be hiring a uh, that's consultant. What I thought you yes. intend to so hire. So there's no benefits and it'll start out as a part-time, so we haven't established that quite yet. Okay. Helene, no you. benefits and no pension, right? No benefits and no pension, that's okay. correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Anything else? No, I think I'm okay. Pauline, the other one was okay. page 23, right? That was it? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excuse me. I would now, can I? Thank you. I appreciate your uh, your input, Mrs. Uh, Councilwoman Smith. I'd make a motion that Ordinance Number 0-11-19 be finally passed and adopted, and that notice of its passage and adoption be published in the June 1, 2011 issue of the Ash Park Press by reference to its title only. So a second. Second, Mayor. We have a roll call, please, Ms. Woman. Mrs. Clark. Yes. Mr. Nicastro. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mr. Gatto. Yes. Mayor Walsh. Yes. 
Good job on that one. Mm -hmm. 883, amend chapter 223, peddling and soliciting in chapter 241, food handling establishments. This order is amends chapter 223, entitled peddlers and solicitors, and chapter 241, titled retail food handling establishments, to amend the definition of mobile food vendors and to clarify the requirements with respect to the duration and location of the same. Order number 0 11 2 introduced and passed on first reading on 6 14 11 published. According to law, is not being taken up for further consideration of public hearing. After the name of the public case, this ordinance has been parked presidential 61711 is submitted to another copy of the ordinance as a post on the bulletin board of the municipal building and copies are available to the general public upon request. Ms. Wong, will you please read the title of the ordinance? An ordinance of the Township of Howell amending Chapter 223 entitled Peddling and Soliciting and amending Chapter 241 entitled Retail <laughs> Food Handling Establishments of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Howell. At this time, let's open the meeting to the public. For anybody from the public who would like to speak on this ordinance. I'd like to close the public portion of the meeting for that ordinance. Um, any member of the council? May I make a motion that ordinance number 0-11-20 be finally passed and adopted and that notice of its passage and adoption be published in the 7-1-2011 issue of the Asbury Park Press by reference to its title only. A second. Second. Give me a roll call, please, Ms. Woman. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. Introduction to new business of ordinances. Uh, 9A1. The ordinance amends the procedure of fingerprinting and criminal background checks of volunteers of youth and nonprofit organizations. I need a member of the council. May I make a motion that ordinance number 0-11-21 on first reading by title introduce that ordinance by first reading by title and to order the same be published in the July 1st, 2011 issue of the Asbury Park Press together with notice of its introduction and passage on first reading by title and that it will be further considered for final passage after public hearing and a meeting of the Township Council to be held on July 12th, 2011 at 7.30 p.m. prevailing time in the municipal building. Need a second. Second. Have a roll call, please, Ms. Wall. Uh, Ms. Wall, would you please read the title of the ordinance? Uh, right. An ordinance of the Township of Powell amending Chapter 115 entitled Criminal History Background Check of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Powell. Have a roll call, please, Ms. Wallman. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. 982. Monmouth County Improvement Authority 2011 Capital Equipment Lease Program for various equipment. This ordinance authorizes the execution of lease agreement with the Monmouth County Improvement Authority of various equipment. I need a member of the council. I'll make a motion to do to order number 0 11 22 and first read by title in order to be seen be published in the July 1st, 2011 issue of the Asbury Park Press together with its notice of its introduction and passage on first reading by title. And it'll be further considered for final passage after public hearing and a meeting of the Township Council will be held on July 12th, 2011, 7.30 prevailing time in the Municipal Building. I have a second. Second. Ms. Wong, will you please read the title of the ordinance? Ordinance authorizing the leasing of certain capital equipment by the Township of Howell, New Jersey from the Monmouth County Improvement Authority and the execution of a lease and agreement relating thereto. Can I have a roll call, please, ma'am? Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. 983, uh, 2011 Capital Equipment Lease Program for Police Cars. And a member of the council. Motion to introduce ordinance number 01123 on first reading by title and to order the same to be published in the July 1st, 2011 issue of the Asbury Park Press together with notice of its introduction and passage on first reading by title and that it will be further considered for final passage after public hearing at a meeting of the Township Council to be held on July 12, 2011 at 7.30 prevailing time in a municipal building. Second. Have a roll call. Uh, please read the title of the ordinance, ma'am. Ordinance authorizing the leasing of certain capital equipment by the Township of Powell, New Jersey, from the Monmouth County Improvement Authority and the execution of a lease and agreement relating thereto. Have a roll call, please. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? No. Mayor I Walsh? Just, I just want to be clear that my no is I'm being consistent with what I've said all along on police cars. I'm absolutely fine with buying them. I know we have to buy them. I just think buying 35 cars in the span of nine months. That just still does not sit right with me. 
we're buying we're entering into an agreement to lease 20 more and the 15 that we just ordered a couple of months ago aren't even in the building yet I I, I just think we're all over the place with police cars okay. fine what was that three yeses and a no yes yes nine eight four approve application for state and center grant for how college retail center subject to new jersey economic development authority approval motion to introduce ordinance number 0-11-24 on first reading by title and to order the same to be published in the 7111 issue of the asbury park press together with the notice of its introduction and passage on first reading by title and then it will be further considered for final passage after public hearing at a meeting of the township council to be held on 7 12 11 at 7 30 uh prevailing time in the municipal building second second Ms. Warren, please read the title of the ordinance. An ordinance of the Township of Howell approving the application for state incentive grant for Howell Commons Retail Center, subject to the New Jersey Economic Development Authority approval. Roll call, Mayor. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> Mrs. Clark. Yes. Mr. Nicastro. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mr. Gatto. Yes. Mayor Walsh. Yeah, okay. Everybody understands what that is, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, we do have an add on 985 I talked about before, Deputy Mayor. Uh, do you have to read it by title or just introduce, just introduce, introduce it? Introduce it. Uh, make a motion to introduce ordinance number 0 11 25 on first reading by title and to order that the same be published in the July 1st, 2011 issue of the Esbury Park Press together with notice mm -hmm. of its introduction and passage on first reading by title and that it will be further considered for final passage after a public hearing and a meeting of the Township Council to be held on July 12th, 2011. At 7.30 p.m., prevailing time in the municipal building. Do I have a second? Second. Ms. Warren, please read the title of the ordinance. Ordinance authorizing the guarantee by the Township of Howell, New Jersey, payment of principal and interest on the capital equipment, lease revenue bond, series 2011, Howell Project of the Monmouth County Improvement Authority. Can I have a roll call, please, Ms. Warren? Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. For the benefit of the public, municipal offices will be closed on Monday, July 4th, an, observ an observance of Independence Day. For those that don't know, today is the anniversary of the Battle of Monmouth. Councilwoman Smith informed me on the way here. I'll be stopping at Molly Pitch as well on the way home. Um, we do have a workshop regular meeting on Tuesday, July 12th. Executive session will be at 6.30. Regular session will be at 7.30. This is nice. Um, I need a motion to adjourn. Yes. Let's so move. Second. <laughs> Give me a roll call, please, Ms. Wallman. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. God bless you all. Drive safe and have a happy Independence Day. No.